Hi guys, Tyler here, a CSR rep here at Explore Scientific. Today we're going to talk about astrophotography. We've had a lot of requests from everyone stating, hey Tyler, what's a good sensor to use for astrophotography? What telescope can I use? How do I hook it up? How do I run it? How do I do this? How do I do that? So today is going to be kind of a basic introductory series on this particular subject in astrophotography. I have here an Explore Scientific triplet ED80, a ZWO2600, which is my personal camera, and a Canon 5D, which is a full frame DSLR. So basically what I'm gonna go over is how to hook up these said telescopes, or how to hook up these said cameras to our telescopes. Now I'm gonna be throwing somewhat of a lot of information out if you want your best information to figure out what sensor works best with your telescope that you're wanting to look at, always use astronomy.tools. They will give you the correct format and what you will visually see in a pictogram on what you're trying to shoot for. And it'll give you the arc second, the resolution, and if you're gonna undersample or oversample. I'm not gonna go over those today because that is quite a bit of information and some of that is still over my head. But basically, with a DSLR or astrophotography, you can either shoot with a telephoto lens starting out and it's a basic great setup, as long as you have a good tracking mount. Any type of tracking mount will do as long as you have a good polar alignment and your mount is level. Now, but say you wanna step it up a little bit and actually attach it to a telescope. What you will simply do is purchase a Canon M48 to 0.75 T-ring adapter that it has a bayonet mount that works with your designated camera. All cameras are different, so please make sure you get the correct mount or you will be fighting a lot of things and we don't want that. So basically, you take your lens off if you have one, and I'm gonna do this real quick because I don't wanna have a naked sensor exposed for a while. And I have a field flattener already attached to my other camera here, but you'll unthread this one thread it onto this point on the M48 threads and throw it literally in back of the telescope. Then you can start imaging. You can use a um, sharp cap to image with if you would like. It's a free software that anyone can use. So is Nina, <coughs> excuse me. As long as the software is ASCOM compliant, you'll be good to go. Next camera that I'm gonna show you is my personal dedicated astronomy cooled camera. Now what is the difference between a dedicated astronomy camera compared to a DSLR? Well the difference is I can cool this sensor down a lot quicker. Now what's that gonna to do to my picture? Well between a DSLR and a dedicated astronomy camera, I'm gonna get rid of a lot of noise with this particular camera because I have the ability to cool it. That is the main purpose and the general purpose of these particular cameras so I can get a lot better quality of a picture. Now there's nothing wrong starting out with the DSLR to get you going into that aspect. That way you know what to expect, you know what framing is gonna look like in your camera when you're looking at objects and there's always nothing wrong with going with a full frame camera but you are gonna pay a lot more money compared to an APS-C type camera or a four thirds type camera and a micro four thirds or an inch uh, sensor. Now this ZWO camera is hooked up to our 55 millimeter field flattener. Now what's great about this field flattener is you're able to screw on a two inch filter, whichever filter you wanna do. And then you can literally just pop it straight into the back of our compression ring and get to going on the imaging. Now some questions we do get is sometimes it's not 55 millimeters back focus from the back of this lens to the camera sensor. Now with ZWO and QHY, they give you the necessary adapters to get to that 55 millimeters of back focus from the field flattener. Now you do have to play around with sometimes, you do have to play around with the back, spoke, back focus or the spacing a little bit. It's usually five millimeters plus or minus. Again, this is all experimentation until you find what works best for you. Again, my name is Tyler with Explore Scientific. I hope this kind of covers some of the basic steps you need to get you going within the astrophotography realm. Again, I hope you have clear skies and keep looking up.